Welcome to The Screen Queen, the show where I'll be talking about your favorite show or your favorite movie. You'll just have to find out what you're about to know. This is your Screen Queen, your host, Samantha Parrish. Hello there and welcome back to the show. This is your host, your lean, mean, movie-talking machine, Samantha Parrish. For the final episode of the Valentine series, we're going to be covering a absolutely significant historical movie that I am very proud to talk about on the show. This might be the most important episode on the screen, Queen. With movies and TV shows being the bread and butter of my life and my interest, biography movies is like that movie meat that just puts that whole entire show sandwich together for me. I absolutely love biography movies and getting to learn what really happened, what did it take, who was involved, and there's a lot of interesting history behind how this historical movie was made. This is one of the most culturally significant movies, and honestly, I gotta be frank, we're never gonna get another biography movie the way that we have loving. There is a lot to talk about with the history about this famous love story. So let's end the Valentine's Day series with the greatest love story of all time. This is Loving. So let's start off by talking about the cast because this thing had me absolutely bamboozled and befuddled for the fact that this extremely sweet love story has a cast that has usually played anti-heroes or villains. The thing that enticed me to watch the film from the get-go was the female lead that played Mildred Loving. Ruth Nega is an actress that I mostly associate with the comic book world and the action world. My first introduction to this actress was on the show Preacher. That's how I knew about her. And then uh, when I saw the trailer come out for Loving, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's Tulip from Preacher. What, what's she doing here? And then immediately recognizing her with Joel Edgerton, it just like blew my mind to see two people that I would never think be in this movie together. So this like just totally caught me off guard to see the woman that sticks a corn on the cob into someone's mouth and stomps on it and bites someone's ear off. And she's playing the most sweet, tender, uh, headstrong woman in our history, and god damn it if she didn't blow it out of the fucking park. My god, she did a fantastic job, and it just still shocked me to see the equal counterpart with um, Joel Edgerton playing Richard Loving. And I've mostly known this man for playing bad guys. This was the dude that played um, the, what's his name? Tom in The Great Gatsby, and I'm like, what are you doing here in my in this biotopic. And I'm not really a huge Joel Edgerton fan. He's there. That's kind of the best way I would put it. But the way I would describe his performance is that he makes a grown man look small. A lot of his gestures is the way that Richard was processing everything in this whole court case where he doesn't understand why things have to go so terse. That he understands why that... Caroline County is against him being married to his African-American love of his life. But there are some things that don't have to go extreme. He wants things just very chill, very calm. He doesn't want to cause any trouble. He just, he's willing to do whatever it takes just as long as that doesn't uh, counter with him uh, being with his wife and raising his three children. There are so many mannerisms that Joel Edgerton gives Richard Loving that is just, it's just a powerful presence to see how he just holds himself in. Like he just looks so scared all the time and shit. I mean, it, 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 I had to think about that, that Richard Loving probably was terrified for the fact that he knew what he was getting into. He knew what was going to be ahead of him. There are so many scenes in the movie where Joel Edgerton emanates so much of Richard's feelings during the whole process. There 
are scenes where he's sitting in a chair and he just looks like he's closing in on himself. He just looks kind of hunched and kind of like a turtle almost where he just is there and he's present, but he's concerned and he isn't confused, but he's confused for the reasons of how come it can't be resolved in the courthouse back at Caroline County. Why does this have to go to other counties? He wants the circle small because of how much the danger is going to increase with more awareness and everything. He just wants to protect his family. The other thing that shocked me in this movie, and honestly it still does, is I'm so shocked when I saw Nick Kroll in this movie, who I had never seen in an actual movie before. I've seen the name, I've seen his name pop up in Big Mouth, so to find him in Loving, I'm like, oh my god, what's that nasty man doing here? And it just shocked me to see how much he did not do what he normally does. And I expect that. But to see him blend into this character that I forgot for a second that that was Nick Kroll. That's how good he was in this movie. He played Bernard Cohen to a perfection. An absolute perfection for someone that wants to get justice for Richard and Mildred working every step of the way, wanting to take their case, but is also very terrified about what the outcome is going to be because of what's ahead of themselves. They're about to change history with having interracial marriage, but knowing that this could go both ways. They could win or they could lose. He's not going to be cocky about it. That just showed how much he emanated a bunch of Bernard Cohen's uh, history and his involvement with the Loving versus Virginia case. The last that I want to talk about before we move on to the actual plot of the movie, <sighs> Michael Shannon makes an appearance in the movie as the guy that took the famous photo for Life magazine. And he came to their house and took the photo of Mildred and Richard on the couch watching the Andy Griffith show. But I'm still sitting there like, General Zod's in this movie now? First we got Ruth Niga, who plays anti-heroes. Then we got Joel Egerton, who plays villains and anti-heroes. And then we got Nick Kroll, who plays nasty people! And now we got General Zod! <laughs> What's going on here? Why are there so many people that are known for playing anti-heroes and villains in this wholesome movie? It's such a shocker, and it's amazing to see how much these people were out of their element and did a fantastic job, but it's going to be one of, the, one of those rare casts that you see where it doesn't match from what you knew from them in other films or TV shows. The whole tone of the movie really centers on how these real-life people are grasping the gravity of the situation that things are going to get very dangerous and that's really what makes enti that's really what makes it enticing to watch this movie is you know how it's going to end you you know history was made with how loving versus virginia was won in the supreme court but still you got to see those increment pieces of what led up to that and we wouldn't have those increment pieces if it wasn't for the powerhouse performances of all these actors and actresses but this historical movie, despite the fact that it is brought to life by all these amazing actors and actresses, it does kind of have a sore spot, and it's actually at the beginning of the movie. At the beginning of the entire movie, it starts out with Mildred sitting there, and she's got something heavy on her mind, and she says, I'm pregnant. And... Richard just says, well, that's great. Except here's the thing. The first child of Mildred Loving is not Richard Loving's son. In the movie, all three children are seen as all of Richard Loving's biological children. That's not the case. Before Mildred met the love of her life, she was with someone. And unfortunately, relationship didn't work out. <clears throat> couple of periods got missed the math was there and realized that the last person she was with is the father of her child and when she got together with Richard she did say 
listen, I, I, I'm pregnant, and it's the other guy that I was with before we got together. And that didn't stop him. He was still on board to be with Mildred the rest of his life. You know, like a good man would do. Richard definitely sets the, the stage for who you want in a good husband. A lot of people joke and say, you know, get a, a, a Gomez to your Morticia. It's like, I don't know, get a Richard to your Mildred. Why can't we have that for a t-shirt? Richard's the ultimate dude, my dudes. He treated her first child, technically his stepson, just the way he would treat all of his biological children. They're all the same because he has there been there from the get-go. He, he took the reins. He wanted to be the child's father. And then history was made with Loving versus Virginia officially abolishing illegal interracial marriage and having marriage being equal to all races that you can marry whoever you want, you know, happy day, hallelujah, ham sandwich, all that jazz. And then tragedy would happen to the Loving family. And that's honestly what makes me really sad to, to this episode is that this movie was a long time coming in the making and only one person got to see that movie. Probably two people. Uh, the daughter of the Lovings and Bernard Cohen. As of right now, as I'm talking, the only survivor of the Loving family is the daughter. Richard and Mildred's sons have both passed away. One died in 2000 and another one died in 2010 after uh, Mildred Loving's passing in 2008. And of course, Richard died in 1975. So they didn't even get to enjoy like a long life of being able to just live free. That, that time was cut short by like, I think six or seven years before uh, Richard's life was taken away by a drunk driver in a car accident. But still, to see the fact that his story, despite his short life, has a long span to show the future generations what he did and what he went through. And it's amazing to see that in this movie. After I watched this movie, I got to go through Caroline County myself. I was on a little mini road trip to go meet one of my gal pals for a one day lunch date. And as soon as I saw the sign, you are now entering Caroline County. I just thought, oh my God, I am literally driving through history. Where the fuck are the signs? This is the home of Richard and Mildred Loving. I I'm still kind of shocked as much as that film is based off of the case that changed history forever didn't have more recognition what the fuck why does bill clinton get to have a you know home of the president and we don't get to have home of the two people that changed history forever i want that i'm gonna petition for that i'm in virginia i can, maybe i can make that happen i don't know i'll see what power i have maybe this episode will we'll, we'll get it going i don't know um but as i was passing through caroline county and i was thinking about the fact that this was where Richard and Mildred had their entire lives together, where they met, where they wanted to be, and where Richard is buried and where Mildred got to live out the rest of her days in the fucking house that he built for her. She was still there until the day she died. And all that was going through my head, just passing through Caroline County. And it was a nice long drive through Caroline County to know that this was where history was made, that these two went through so much shit just to be together. And they were in a place that rejected them. And you know what the really fucking awful irony is? Virginia has a tagline. I'm sure many people have seen it. It's on magnets. It's on uh, bumper stickers. It's on car decals where it says, Virginia is for lovers. It's like, nope, not in this case. <laughs> Loving versus Virginia would have been like, hold my beer and know what we went through to get here to finally say Virginia is for lovers. Now, while I was doing my homework for this movie, I was surprised to find out that this was not the first time that the Richard and Mildred uh, 
loving story was depicted on the big screen, it's the first successful one with faithful adaptations ish. I mean, there was that one something, but other than that, it's good as gold. However, the first one that came out back in the 1990s, I want to say it was like 96, I want to say, uh, when that one came out, it was not well received. They, they didn't do a very good job with it. Even Mildred Loving herself said that the movie did not depict her relationship with Richard or got any of it right. I mean, what does it ever do, unfortunately? That's kind of the unfortunate norm that biography movies will not uphold their genre category. But if she were alive she would be very pleased with how the movie came out and how everything truly felt honorable that they weren't going for just trying to recreate history. They wanted to honor history of the two most important individuals that changed our systems to make it that it's not illegal to love someone of a different race. Okay, while I was recording this episode, I was on the hunt to find this piece of information that I didn't quite remember the details about with one of the first uh, films that was made about it. There was Mr. and Mrs. Loving, came out in 1996, so I was in the ballpark range of the 90s. And it starred uh, Leela uh, Rakron, I, d I hope I did not butcher her name, and Timothy Hutton, and the amazing and, w and very missed Ruby D. And it says here, according to Mildred Loving, not much of it was very true. The only part of it right was that I had three children. That's pretty damn bad. That That's the only thing that Mildred could confirm they got right. I don't want to watch that one knowing that they butchered one of like the greatest love stories. Greatest true love stories, I should say. Uh, let's see here. And then... We have a documentary that came out from Nancy um, Br Bruski, The Loving Story, and then, of course, Loving in 2016. And then there was a four-part uh, film called The Loving Generation that premiered on Topic.com that came out in 2018, so two years after Loving came out. So, But still, the bottom line, Loving takes the cake. Nothing's ever going to beat the way that Jeff Nichols did the faithful and truthful and emotional adaptation of the loving story. But no matter how many times I've watched this movie and have enjoyed seeing the way these two loved each other being depicted by Ruth Naga and Joel Edgerton the ending of the film always gets to me with the final lines of the movie that talked about what happened after uh, they won the Supreme Court case. And as I mentioned earlier, tragedy happened with Richard Loving getting killed in a car accident in 1975 and Mildred just went on with her life. She, she never remarried. And there was a, um, a line that talked about her last interview before she died, where she was asked to speak about Richard. And she said, he was a good man. He took care of me. I miss him. Those last three lines turns me into jello left in the microwave. I'm going to be melting and absolutely destroyed by that line. I have never before or since seen the last lines that didn't have to say any more. It didn't say any less. It was just, I miss him. She's already grieved. She's already had her time with Richard and she cherishes it. And she carried on his legacy until the day she died in 2008. And then to see that echoed in the movie... And then it's just going to keep going with them with more and more people that find this very hidden gem of a movie. I don't know why there's not enough recognition for this to be one of the greatest biotopic movies that we've ever had. It talks about one of our integral parts of our history. We've had Supreme Court case movies before, and I will be talking at some point about some of those movies that involve the court case and 
they're a very interesting part to dive into. But in terms of when they get into mainstream media, I'm surprised this wasn't like frothed after for how people are starved to get more true life cases. Look no further. Loving is one of the best movies that you're going to get that will show you what happened in the process and how it's not an easy, it's not an easy thing to be able to do. These two were just in love and people thought that was bad and they had to show that it wasn't bad to, lo to love someone of a different color. They changed everything for us. Loving doesn't really get enough credit for how much we value their love story and their love story is now a part of our history. I remember in my history class when I first heard about the Lovings and my teacher was telling us about how they were arrested for being in love and how they were the first interracial couple to uh, take the helm and abolish uh, getting rid of illegal interracial marriage and he had to enunciate he's like don't you just love the fact that their last name is loving like it was meant to be and i never forgot about that when he said that in class to close out this episode i gotta give credit where credit's due this movie did an amazing job and it's one of the most perfect movies i've ever seen and i mean that in the sense of something that did not give us any less it didn't give us any more there are so many biotopics that will throw so much in there that it loses track of the soul history of the story but it didn't the director of the movie gave us one of the most beautiful honorable and tragic love stories in our history and we got to see that part of the 1960s echoed for years and years and years and it's always been mentioned about what Mildred and Richard did all because they loved each other and they wanted to be able to provide a wonderful life for their children they had so much courage and fear and love you know it's in it's in their damn name after all you know we see all of these movies about what makes love what do you do for someone that you love there's even a movie called you know what's love got to do with it but this this right here this movie this is what love is all about this is what it comes down to this is what you need from someone this is what love is supposed to look like is between these two they set the bar they set the record and they set it for history and we all got to see that now, this officially ends the Valentine series. So, I have to be honest. I um, I was a little bit nervous going into this series. I say that for a majority of my episodes, and yet, like, it doesn't hold up, and it ends up coming out better than what I originally thought. But me and Valentine's does not have a very good history together, and... I wanted to do this series to just go ahead and get some of the romance movies off of my list that I've been meaning to talk about for quite some time on the show. But I think I got to count my blessings for the fact that I got to do three movies that are near and dear to my heart and having to talk about these movies that got me through, which is usually, and these three movies got me through a very rough month for me. This month was rough for me personally and with everyone listening out there it means so much to me that you took the time out of your day or to have me with this show as a part of your day and that means so much to me as uh you all basically helped me get through a very rough month for rough anniversaries and everything so thank you so much out there and just like with valentine's day you know i love you all very much so now is the time for our regularly scheduled random content on the Screen Queen, as we're going to be diving in to see what the next episode is going to be. There's been some suggestions added to this, so it's it's going to be a little bit uh, 
It's gonna be intense to find out what's gonna happen. Oh, and I got the overflowing and everything. My goodness, I need like a lotto system, like like one of the things you see in the lottery. <laughs> Maybe I can get that someday. Oh no, some pieces fell. That's okay. Okay, I got one. I got one. What are you? Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> okay, well, you know, I did put out into the universe accidentally that I thought the other day, Oh, huh, well, you know, it's been a while since I talked about a TV show on here, and what do I get? What perfect timing? The next episode on the screen, Queen, is going to be the Netflix show, You. Now, if I didn't put Netflix in front of that, all of y'all would have been like, what do you mean I'm going to be on the show? What? Who do you mean you? Who is me? I am... What? <laughs> oh, there we go, man. Oh, my God. Well, okay. Damn. That's going to be a fun episode to do. I say that like I'm not looking forward to it, but I think because the recent season came out that there's going to be a lot to, to dive into for that show, and that'll be fun. Okie dokie. Well, thank you all so much for listening to the Valentine series for the whole month of February. Even though it was a limited series, it means a lot to me, to, to those that took the time to still listen to the episodes. I saw a major spike increase of episodes that were downloaded. Uh, thank you so much out to all out there that have been supporting the show and the new people out there that have joined the screen team. Thank you so much for being here. You all take care, stay amazing, and I will be back with another episode. Because, you know, we got you to talk about. You know? <laughs> Alrighty. This is your screen queen, signing off. Bye bye